Okay, I think we can begin now. Okay. So I'm Thomas Schlumberger. I'm a technical account manager for Fodi Intel, for the International. So the idea is to prepare uh, your server before you deploy it. So it's just important to know who will do uh, every of the following tasks. So it's just important when you deploy to know who will be in charge. And uh, so everything uh, is designed uh, based on the, who is in charge of, of those tasks. So the idea is that uh, uh, there is already a lot of logs which are introduced and uh, included in 4D. And the idea is to provide uh, a new easy tool to do uh, uh, additional uh, logging. So th this is the component which uh, exists since quite long. And uh, this is the purpose of the component. So I don't say it's uh, as uh, advanced as <laughs> the black box. <laughs> but uh, the idea is also to have uh, tracks of uh, any state of your server in case, in any case, even uh, if there is a crash. So uh, this is more mainly information available through the Tau uh, process support description. So it's available through, through Tau. And uh, right now, uh, yes, it's the version uh, U, which is the last one available uh, through Tau. You should upgrade to it, and uh, it's the most up-to-date. So here is the link. You can keep this link and go directly to the to the place where to download it. Uh, if you are not aware of uh, how to install it, you just have to create a component folder next to the structure or next to your application and just uh, get the archive and install it. That's all you need to, know, uh, to do uh, at the minimum. Uh, if you are in a de development mode, you, can, uh, you have access in the execute menu of all methods beginning with AA4D which are the methods shared by the components. So you can directly just execute uh, uh, the recommended one is this one. And you get this simple dialogue where you can either retrieve reports from the server or have a manager window which allows you to either retrieve the, re the report itself or to manage the store procedure creating reports. So here is a small example of uh, the method. Do you hear me? Yes? Yes, OK. This is a small method uh, that I recommend to start automatically the, the, the store procedure. Of course, if you are using the same database also in development mode, you would add a if compile mode equal uh, if is compiled. So this uh, rather new small code is to add in your uh, host database, because uh, for some selectors, we really need to have uh, this code executed on the host to get uh, uh, not the value of the component, but the value of the host database. So uh, compared to what you have in your keys, you have in your keys the previous version we had to update the component uh, after after providing the master for the for the key. So the last one is a U, uh, and uh, I will still use this kind of strange uh, numbering until uh, V5 is available. So uh, it has been there for long. Uh, in fact, at first it was only three methods that you could add to your host data, to your database before there was any components. And um, I will do a demo with a very preview of the version 5, but uh, it will be only really available in, in June. 
So basically, it creates three kinds of uh, text reports. One is called the array profiler. You will see the content later. If there is any issues, uh, detect automatically, then there is a file name attention report, and all the other reports are created with this, the same uh, architecture in the, number, in the naming. So it begins with report, the year, the month, the day, and the hours, minutes, and seconds. So this is a content, uh, typical content of an array profiler. You have uh, the manufacturer, the memory. So this is done uh, at the first creation of a report. I'm launching some uh, external, pro external uh, process to retrieve this kind of information. Uh, this is done in the attention. So I try to detect what is wrong. So you have two kinds of information. One is called dress information, it's just a reminder. And attention is something where you should pay attention of it. So if you create a report and you have an attention file, please uh, check it at first. It's also inside every report if there is any content. This is part of a regular report. So this is also so you have details on the plugin, you have the details on the on the current state of the cache and the memory. So I, I, I'm going a little fa faster because we are a little late, sorry. Um, so this was a reminder. You can use the component as a standalone to be a kind of reader. So you launch uh, the, database, uh, the database, you create a data file, and in the file menu, you just use the compare item of the menu to get this dialog. You have a button uh, select folder where you can navigate, but you can also drop directly a folder inside it. And then it will be passed, and uh, I will populate uh, a list box with columns, <coughs> and I have a graph button which appears, which will be used uh, this is uh, the main parts. In fact, there is three group of values. One is on the left side with the number of users, uh, number of tasks, and uh, current uh, number of process. I use a double, by default, I use a double uh, scale. So you can better see a correlation between number of users and, uh, and process. And there is just a reminder about the meaning of uh, the yellow polygon, which never decrease until you restart, because it, it keep in count the the aborted process. So it's also a way to to see when you have restarted, uh, when you pass a folder. So after the user and process, you have three values regarding the cache. One is a uh, the size of the cache. The um, the dark uh, green one is the, use, the, the filling of the cache, and have added uh, a new, new one since quite a moment, which is uh, the maximum free block inside the cache, which allows to measure the fragmentation of the cache. So at the beginning, you can see here that by default, you have uh, four blocks in the cache, and when the first, uh, when there is no need to fill, uh, it will uh, just uh, don't touch the large, uh, the fourth uh, block. And then when he really needs to do it, he will uh, probably uh, have to flush. And then uh, there will be a, a consuming of the last block. And you will see that it fragment. At one moment, it is, it, it is able to recover a part of the fragmentation. And the last uh, group of values is regarding the memory. So we have uh, four or three values, the use RAM, the use uh, virtual memory. The, the black and the blue polygon are important to detect if you have any memory leak. And sometimes, uh, unexpectedly, because it's, it, it might be not related to your application, <coughs> you have the free memory. And it's important to check it, because uh, 
sometimes uh, you don't understand why you can't process a large uh, blob or a large picture uh, or a large item through your web server and you you see that uh, for example uh, OS 6 tend to use uh, as much as possible the frame memory to cache a file. So you might have issues and probably sometimes you will need to use uh, um, the component from Mayako about who automatically create a purge. And you can do it in uh, at night when nobody is connected. So just I mentioned something which is in the slide, but I won't spend too much time on it. It was just one customer who who said that when I install and use your component, I crash. And uh, so here are some explanation about it. This is uh, just one setting which is nice. You can limit the number of reports you have in your, in your folder, and uh, it only crash when you're using the component in uh, with a 64-bit version of the server. And at the end. It was because he was using a very old processor, which was not supporting uh, the extension uh, SSC 4.1. So uh, my component is compiled also with V14R5. And uh, there was a change in V14R3, uh, V14.3, regarding the way we compile uh, for the handling of uh, our, um, new, new numbers. Okay, the implementation, uh, maybe I will go up. Uh, for the basic, you just install it, so you don't, if you have an issue or if you need to get a state of it, uh, you just uh, have it already there. You don't need to restart, ask your customers to de 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 disconnect, it's it there. So at the minimum, you, you have it. Uh, the setting for the component are currently quite limited in the version 4, but you can uh, set a display, uh, default display for the graph. You can decide where you want to locate the, the folder report and you decide what are the maximum number of reports, that, as, we, as we have seen. Um, this is just two tips that I'll show because it's not always known. This star here, it means that it's not in your, in your slides, sorry. So I will just show this. So I'll make the demo with the uh, V14R4. 64 bit. So it means that it's quite stable and usable. And uh, um, I'm in 10, uh, 11. Uh, 10, 11, 4. Okay. So I will. So the two, this, this last item of the menu, when you are, for example, on a Mac, it's better for me to look at here. Go to the <coughs> so for example, you are building a client server application and you have a, a Windows application. And uh, because you are on a Mac, you can't get the details of, the, of this build. So with the, the component, you can go to the, where is the exe file? Uh, exe file. You just select the exe file, and I parse the content as I do under Windows. And I'm able to know that it was built with V14R4. And uh, also, I have the detail of the build of the application. Oh, yes, this slide is not at the right place. Uh, this is just, so I will launch it again. 
this is something also which is not in your slide. It just explains how you can use the component to detect if there is any memory leak. So, of course, I'm suppose, I suppose that you're using your own uh, database so you don't mess with the uh, real reports of the customer. So you just make a loop, and there is a common with uh, the name faceless, meaning that you don't have a dialogue at the end of the creation of the report. So you can loop uh, and uh, then create reports, and then from there, you just display the graphic, the, the graphic, and you see if the black and the brown, uh, blue polygon are going up or not. And uh, this way, you can detect if there is any memory leak in the, your piece of code. Okay. Uh, so I'll go back to the demo because there is. Uh, so usually, what you do, this is in standalone, but I will show you just one thing if it's still online. You can, here I'm using a built client. This is, in fact, our bug tracker database, which include in a menu the dialog that I mentioned before. So here I'm using uh, the default value, which is retrieve the reports from the server uh, yesterday and today, and put it in a compare dialog. So in fact, I don't retrieve the full uh, report. I just retrieve the values to populate the, the list box. And then I have the graph. And I can see uh, what, what is going on. Is there an, any attention? And uh, I can update and uh, see different things. So just to let you know, this is a server. It's on a virtual machine, and we are using uh, V14R4 since one moment. So uh, it means that we are really using the R version before we, we deploy them. Uh, we set them as a public version. Um, so this, I will leave like that. Yes. This is generated. If it's not there, when you create a report, it's automatically generated. Array yes, array profiler. But it uses quite a lot of uh, launch XML process because I need to <laughs> do a lot of uh, things that to. Um, so I'll go back to this. So. In the same dialog, this is now in standalone. And this is, I can reduce here. And, uh, I'll show you how you can handle uh, documents. So, for example, uh, this kind of reports. These are very old ones, for example. And I still maintain the, uh, the maintenance of it. But so I can drop the pass, as you see. But the problem is that here in this folder, there is more than. Uh, 16,000 reports. So to speed up things, you can just, if you have made an export, you just get the export. I hope it works there. You can drop directly. So. It's not the right one. I think, uh, yes, this one. Because 
The original one was too old, so I don't uh, allow to handle it. So now, because in the blob I also uh, store the path of the folder, I'm able to open it directly. And you can see it was a very old version. It was before 2011. And uh, of course, it, it didn't have the same format. It was about V12 uh, database. But there was almost already many things. And for example, if you need to convert a very old database from a customer and there is already this kind of report, you can check first that you have the same main UID, then, uh, so you still have a valid structure to be able to convert. <laughs> and uh, you have a list of information. Uh, here we didn't have the list of all the uh, of all the plugin and component, but you already have the list of how many records you had in every in every tables. So I really try each time to maintain uh, compatibility, and you have two kind of reports: French one and English one, and I can pass both of them. So. Uh, I will show just some cases. This is, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the original reports. This is a typical case where the customer had a crash. He was using. Uh, 32 bits version of the server. I don't know if you can read it. Yes. So, what I do in the component is that when I see that the uh, virtual memory is nearing the limitation of the 4 gigabytes, already raise an attention. So, normally you have little time to anticipate, and uh, in this case, uh, at that moment, there was uh, still an increase of the virtual memory and uh, of the RAM usage. And at the end, the customer crashed here. Yeah. So uh, it's important to have these me measures, and you have the, uh, the minimum and the maximum value, which I always remember in the top of the graph. This is a typical uh, memory leak situation. So you see that uh, there is not really uh, connected users, but uh, probably through a store procedure, uh, something uh, is really consuming a lot of memory. So you see those two lines, two polygons going up. And uh, in this case, it, it's not going to create a crash situation, but with the graph, you can uh, easily detect at one moment there was a big increase of uh, memory. This one is another case. So uh, this is with our bug tracker uh, system. We had an issue uh, at one moment uh, in the way we were handling a web request. Uh, uh, yes, web request. And what happened is that uh, we were unable to proceed the, the values. So in fact, all the process trying to handle the content of the request were uh, locked in one way. And uh, this happened, uh, I think, during the night. And in fact, uh, we could see that there was a big increase of, uh, of process trying to handle them, because we have accumulated stack side who went really up. And of course, uh, our virtual memory also went up. So sometimes you have to switch between uh, the last value you display. 
so you have a complete explanation about uh, what is going on. But I think it's important to spend some time just explaining how you we can uh, manipulate the We'll spend just a few moments to explain how you can see the graph. This is, uh, you can see, here you have uh, 16,000 uh, graphs, but uh, you can display all of them, and you, have, you can zoom. You can uh, normally select one, so you have the detail of, of it. You can open the corresponding report by double-clicking. So you have the detail of it. You can uh, decide to switch to a day view. So you have exactly the day. And you can go to the next day or previous day. You can uh, switch. Uh, you can zoom on a specific part. So you just click twice. No, you click twice, and then you extend with a shift down, and then you can see more details, and you can repeat the operation. And if you want to zoom out, you just uh, delete. Use the delete key. Okay. You can ch uh, change the kind of uh, display through this button. And of course, it's quite confusing. So one way in V5 to improve this, but I will probably use less, less uh, f to speed up. So I will first zoom. Okay. So you can uh, enhance the display here. So you can see that uh, when I, uh, uh, I'm over a <coughs> name, I'm uh, increasing the, the thickness of these values so you have a better view. But I, I will change what is displayed because these are all reports. So, uh, for example, uh, I'll use to look. Well, maybe this one. So you can also drop directly a folder. And uh, on Windows, you can uh, do it directly on the MDI Windows, and it will already uh, it will directly open it. So here we have a more complete view. You can see better. So here I. Uh, I highlight mainly the three left values, so you can uh, concentrate on it. And if I want more information about the cache behavior, I just uh, go to see uh, what is uh, going on with the cache. Uh, if, in the in, if in the dialog you have an attention button which is not uh, disabled, you can click on it and you see the counting of the number of attention who were raised. And if you click uh, another time, you can see what is going on. For example, here, the, um, the cache is already quite saturated. And uh, there is a flush. And then, because of the flush, uh, 4D needs to uh, save files which are uh, in the flushed uh, part of the cache and create, uh, before it was named uh, .cell, and now it's .temp. So all unused selection are saved to a file. And normally, it tries to resolve some of them. In, uh, so I raise an attention when there is this kind of things. Uh, what else? Do you have any question on uh, this graphic part? Just w once, one thing before. You can decide the default of what you see. 
So you can see, for example, I want big label. <coughs> I even want a uh, uh, small window. And you can decide what you want to display. So if I save this, those brief and do another graph, it will be compact and with a, a larger labels. This is done uh, without using the, the SVG component. So it's just generating uh, on the fly an XML fi file and uh, putting it in the, it's just a picture variable. It's not a web area. You have any question on the graphic parts? Uh, anyway, it, it's important to read the documentation for to get some details because here we have some uh, way to modify things which are not really evident. Uh, for example, if you click this rectangle, you switch between a, a full uh, height view and a small one. If you click to this one, you will thinner or enhance uh, uh, the polygon uh, lines. Here you can switch the view. Here it's a logarithmic view. Here you just hide the, the left values. You can switch this way. Those, there is many modifiers which are not easy to use. And uh, if you want to, so I will recheck this one. And if you want to switch the last value, you need to use update SVG and shift. And in this case, you can change what you see. And you can have a, here a full picture. So I will just put it this way. All right. Um, Manuel, now, how many times? Where is Manuel? She's supposed to be there. I've lost my, ah, you are the, my timekeeper? Yes, cat minute? Ah, 15 minutes, okay. If I leave, <laughs> if, if I'm with a timekeeper, I'm lost. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, this graph, you can, uh, in fact, export it as an SVG file, and uh, you will be able to, uh, to open it in, uh, in any uh, web browser. You can also here export this value in different format. Compare blob, XML, text tab, and even Excel, even if I'm not as advanced as what is doing Mayako, for sure. It's more basic, but it's one uh, spreadsheet, and it's also in color. Um, Regarding, um, ah yes, uh, important just to show how you can implement a basic uh, thing. So if you use a template, I recommend to create a method name a 4 dm host attention reported. And in this method, you will be able to handle any new attention content created uh, while uh, a new report is created. For example, here, the component is installed in the component folder. So I can directly run a shell method which creates a report. There is a first call to this method, just checking if it exists in the host database. So it's called without any content. And then again, because I, I know I have an attention, it is called again just to pass the blob containing the, con the content of the attention. And here I just make an alert. So you get this uh, row uh, with UTF-8 content. And it's up to you currently to manage it at the host level. You can decide to display an uh, display a notification, or you can send a mail, whatever. And the good thing with the new, uh, last version is that if I create a, again a new report, uh, 
because the attention section, so I can show it again here. Here is my attention section. In fact, it didn't change. The, the, the reason of the attention were not changed. So uh, I don't send again a new attention to the host database. So you only get a new content if there is a change. So that's really a basic code. Currently, there is no code to send SMS or send an email or do whatever. But at least you get an immediate feedback when there is a report created and uh, you want to handle it, all right? Um, maybe I'm still in, in advance 10 minutes. You want to switch to Q&A or see other parts? Uh, up to you. I know we are all late anyway. Yes. Um, you were demonstrating this with using a foggy server, but does it work with the Tinkery server? Yes, of course, yes. Yes, uh, all the method, for example, you can create a report on the remote uh, computer or application. And uh, of course, uh, some parts are always executed on the server for to get the list of the settings of the backups. Uh, I'll just go a little in detail of what is inside the report. So. Uh, And uh, of course, there are parts which are only available on the server, like uh, the settings of the backup. So you can just decide to show on disk. So even if I generate it on the remote, there are parts that I need to get from the server. For example, uh, uh, the, well, not the parsing of this, the detail of uh, the hard disk. Um, this setting is a license. The setting of the cache. But otherwise, you can create, of course, uh, reports, and you can automatically do it with. Uh, there is a command to set the local, uh, the local report. So if you start. In a method, you set uh, with a real pass your local report. You don't have the dialogue to select the, a local report when you are running on the remote. So you can really create reports on the remote and on the server. Yes? Yes. On the remote. From the remote of the remote. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. I just have to recheck if. Uh, I prevent the creation of the store procedure on the remote. I don't think so. It should be possible, yes. Yeah, I've already done it. Ah, you've done it. Uh, what is the problem? Uh, is that there is no problem. Oh. But, uh, okay. <laughs> you, would, uh, have, uh, you would like, for example, to have it. Uh, have a, Okay, you would have a checkbox which would be would say on the server or on the remote, for example, something. Okay, or maybe it's just a new parameter saying it's on the server or, or only on the remote. Okay, good idea. Yeah. Yes. Start to crash? <laughs> oh, it's about to crash, yes. <laughs> yes, you have a countdown, a nice countdown dialogue. Yes, it would be nice, yes. <laughs> Time to play. 
<laughs> get a coffee. It's anyway, it's crashing. Yes. Uh, uh, there is many things that uh, I delayed until version 5. Uh, uh, what uh, I said in the presentation of the session is that you would be able to set uh, your own uh, warning system. Uh, um, of course, I can't do something as advanced as a data mining full package, but uh, uh, you would be able, for example, uh, probably, because you can also, it's not in the demo, but you can uh, create reports at the re historical uh, heavy store procedure, which also try to raise attention with some, uh, for example, you have less than a gigabyte of, RAM, of uh, free space in uh, any of your disk, it will uh, uh, create an attention, but in V5 you will be able to define all the level of settings. But also you have uh, something which is less known, is a way to create a smaller store procedure. We will just get the memory and cache values, and retrieve the va and retrieve it in a JSON format or XML format. So it's much a much lighter store procedure, which execute much faster. That can complete, and uh, normally the default uh, time I think it's every 12 seconds or something like this. So you have uh, a, a small buffer of the last things which happens in your server. So you can detect more precisely if there is something going on wrong. And if you have a sudden uh, growth of any value uh, from this, uh, it would be easy to say oh, something is strange is happening because uh, we have a, a big change. So this is what I, I would like to do. But you can already. Uh, so I'm just showing. Uh, no, not this one. So in your key, you have the PDF in French and in English, and you have the uh, you have the current uh, version. And it and is this one, so you you probably um, have this file, which is a current documentation where you have all the details. You can click, uh, for example, list of the share method, and you have some utility method, which uh, agent schedule call. This is what I was just uh, talking about. Agent gets records. And uh, you can decide to have a JSON or XML result with a minimal. Uh, also, you have a real SQL timestamp, so you, you exactly know what uh, to do. And uh, when you. So it's not really known, and i uh, sorry for not doing a demo about it, but it's, it can be really convenient if you want to have something which is more precise than your five minutes delay. And uh, it's really light to call because it's only a get memory statistics. And uh, the result is put in uh, some arrays in uh, JSON or XML. So you can retrieve and them. And, uh, and this is there from uh, since, uh, since version dot four seven, But uh, I don't really talk about it. So it, everything is in the documentation. And regarding the, the graph, everything uh, more or less is explained. Uh, so. so you should read at least once, for example, uh, these kind of things. Uh, where are the button to switch uh, for, to, for switching the height of the graph and uh, to change uh, these kind of things? All right. Any other question? Uh, uh, currently, I just I don't even use uh, uh, resources. I just have a flag saying, "Okay, is it in French or in English?" <coughs> and you can force, by the way, to have uh, the display, the result in French just by adding uh, a file name with French and underscore interface in the resource folder of the component. 
So probably, maybe yes. Uh, uh, I know that Mayako already told me, okay, uh, here uh, for Japanese, uh, they can't read English, so they need a, a Japanese version. So he tried to extract everything for, for me, but at that time, I didn't do the job. And so, uh, so uh, yes, uh, theoretically, yes, we, we can do uh, anything. Uh, if you need a, a check version, and I'll provide you a list of string. If you uh, if you agree, we we can uh, we can do this. Yes. Since which version of code you can use? V12. V12. It's still V12. The uh, the last uh, code it's still uh, reporting V12. Nobody from the marketing here. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just yelling about about this. So it's so if you need to convert a database, you can really check, have a picture of it uh, in an intermediate version, and then, uh, for example, you can compare the list of tables. You have a way to compare two reports: one from v12 and one for v14 or v15, and and be sure that there is no record loss in the table and everything. It's even in v11, doesn't it? Yes. It's finished. Yeah. Thank you.